Hello garden friends, Jersey Shore Lisa from MyNJGarden.com. Are you wondering if your fig tree is dead? If it made it through the winter? There are different varieties of figs and some of them are more cold hardy than other ones. You may have heard online, if the branches are red, they're dead. And other ways to be able to tell if your fig is going to come out of dormancy, if it is still alive, if it's going to wake up again. I'm in New Jersey at the Jersey Shore. I'm in zone 7A and I have a few different fig trees in the yard. So let me show you the different varieties that I have and the stages of life that I'm seeing as they're starting to wake up. Here we have a tree that I got this cutting probably about seven years ago from a friend. She had said at the time that this was a Peter's honey fig and Peter's honey is a variety that was brought over from Sicily many, many years ago. These tend to be very tender plants. So it's probably the best idea to continuously wrap these trees over the winter in zone 7a where I am at the Jersey Shore. The range is really up to zone 7 uh, as far as hardiness goes. Some years I wrap it, some years I don't. This year I didn't wrap it, I just heavily mulched it. Um, there is no life on these branches up near the top, but I did not prune it. Um, I figured I would prune it once it started coming back to see how far up it would actually survive. And so I pulled the mulch away from the base of the plant and you can see down here that yes, it is starting to show some leaf buds are starting to leaf out. Now I do have other things planted around here. There are some cana lilies that kind of come up in and around the fig that the roots are alive and well, and it's probably going to send up a bunch of new branches this year. Uh, we'll see if we get any figs off of it. It does take a while for this tree to get going, but we'll see, we'll give it a shot. We did have some figs on it last year, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Uh, once it really leafs out, I'll prune the top. Let me show you some of the other trees that I have in the yard that are a little more cold hardy and are doing a little bit better than this Peter's honey fig. Now a beautiful thing about fig trees is that they're very easy to root. So you can take cuttings from a fig and root them either in water or in soil and you can share them and you could share them with family and friends. And so sometimes varieties will tend to get muddled, especially if you're getting a fig as from someone who inherited a fig or something like that. So you may think that a variety is a brown turkey or a celeste or something like that, but you may not be sure because you got it from someone else who wasn't exactly sure. So just keep that in mind. And if the fig does really well in your area, just kind of keep track of how you care for it so that you can pass along that advice to whoever you're sharing your cuttings with. Speaking of sharing cuttings, this small fig tree has only been in the ground for one season. I got this from a garden friend. His name is Andrew and he lives locally. We think that this is a brown turkey, but we're not sure. This is in the same way as the Peter's honey fig. This is just starting to wake up from down near the roots. You can see a little bit of leafing out there. You can see a little bit of that over here at the base of this branch. This may perform better over time because it's only been in the ground for a year and I've seen Andrew's mature fig and it leafed out on its own much earlier than the Peter's honey did for me in that same season. And uh, he never wrapped his and it leafed out all along the branches so that he didn't have to prune back. He didn't really have die back. So I'm looking forward to this being in the ground for another year before I make any decisions about how it needs to be cared for moving forward. But I do have a couple of other figs that are 
pretty darn cold hardy and they're already leafing out all along the branches. Let me show them to you. Now, a lot of people don't mind wrapping their figs. There's nothing wrong with wrapping a fig tree, but as someone who gardens in a way uh, that tries to reduce the amount of work and intervention by the gardener, we want to be able to plant the right plant in the right place and have the conditions be right for that plant. I don't see why I would choose a variety that isn't hardy in my zone. Uh, I would prefer something that I could set it and forget it, plant it, and it will produce for me. And hopefully this is going to be the plant that does that. Let me show you what I mean. This is the rain garden and things are coming up beautifully in here. I'm gonna show you this fig that I put in last summer. It is the Chicago hardy fig and look how well it did. I did not wrap this and yet all the way at the end of the branches we have leaves coming out which tells me there was no dieback on at least these three branches really ready to come out of dormancy now and I'm, I'm real happy about that. We even have a leaf bud on this one here that's green and we'll see about these other two branches, but I'm looking forward to even maybe getting some fruit off of this this year. And this is the other fig tree. This one is in the backyard uh, behind this little picket fence to keep Vanna the Yellow Lab out of the area. These are the blackberries, uh, the thornless blackberries. And here we have the Olympian fig. The Olympian fig is extremely cold hardy and I did not wrap this either. And you can see that it is ready to come out of dormancy like nobody's business. It's leafing out everywhere and it looks really beautiful. I'm excited about this. This has been in the ground. This is its um, second spring in the ground. So uh, maybe we'll get figs off of this this year. Potentially, we'll see how it goes, but it is certainly cold hardy enough not to worry about wrapping it. So I am actually really lucky to have the ability to have built this greenhouse with my husband. It's made of um, recycled windows, old windows and slider doors. And we are able to put some beautiful potted trees in this greenhouse over the winter to help us overwinter some tender plants. This is why I'm not really concerned about if I want to end up removing that Peter's honey fig in the front yard because it takes too long to ripen because I do have a cutting from that Peter's honey fig and I potted that up here it is here and I was able to overwinter it in the greenhouse I've already brought it outdoors uh, and it rained all night last night so it's real happy it's leafed out it's ready to start the season and I'll be much more likely to get edible figs from this plant than the one in the front yard which may or may not give me figs in time before the next frost so if you have the ability to overwinter your plants indoors, either in a garage or in a greenhouse, this may be the way to go with those figs that are a little more tender rather than planting them in the ground and dealing with wrapping them. You can put them in a large pot uh, and bring them inside. The only unfortunate thing about growing a fruit tree in a pot is that you really do have to monitor and maintain and make sure that you're fertilizing it appropriately and making it sure it's watered well um, but not, not over watered. It's a little more um, intensive as far as the attention of the gardener goes, but uh, it is a definite way to be able to ensure getting fruit. Uh, so that is the Peter's honey fig. And then this is actually that Olympian fig. I was able to divide that when I first got it before I planted that other one in the ground. Um, that one's in the ground, it is leafing out, but look what a head start this one has. Uh, 
after it was in the greenhouse over the winter. So it do, did have that season extender of a head start, the, the protection, the extra warmth that comes in early spring inside the greenhouse. I've brought this out too, and I'm sure we'll be able to get some fruit off of this very shortly. So being able to start the figs indoors uh, in the greenhouse has been a big benefit. I do love uh, the help that I get from nature and from the soil microbes and from just being part of the outdoor environment when I'm able to plant in the ground rather than in containers. But I want the fruit from the fruit tree. So to hedge my bets, give myself a little bit of insurance. I put them in pots too, just to make sure that I'd be okay. <laughs> but so those are my favorite varieties for growing here in the ground. I like Chicago Hardy so far. I like Olympian, they're great. And uh, let me know if you grow figs and your favorite way to overwinter them. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel and join me for all my garden updates. I'll update you again soon. Thanks for watching.